really hurt. I hope I didn't frighten you. What do you want? I told you that I didn't want to talk to you again. You want to stay right here and listen to what I have to say. But I can't. I'm late for choir practice as it is. I told you to mind your own business. I warned you to leave my daughter alone, to stay away from her. I only tried to be kind to a motherless child. Come like her mother was. You're not making sense. I didn't even know her mother. Nancy told me she died long before you came to Walla. That's right. She died for her sins. And so will you. No, no, no. I liked it there. We didn't have to leave, Nancy. Well, why'd we leave then, Pa? Because Wall isn't a fitting place to bring up young ones. That's the way it always is. You always talk about how good a place is, and then after we've been there a while, it, it's never fit to live in. You're starting to talk more like your ma every day. I'm sorry. Keep on the way you're going, you'll end up just like your ma did. How did she end up, Pa? Remember what the good book says. Mind not the conceit of woman. Go on. For her lips are like honeycomb, but her touch is death and damnation. This is Cimarron City, a nice town growing town. Makes a man feel kind of proud knowing that Cimarron is a kind of town people keep coming to because it's a good place to build a new life, to bring up the kids. And they sure keep coming. Three yesterday, two more today. Looks like we're gonna have two more taxpayers. How long you figure you'll be away? Uh, no longer than it'll take me to ride over to Wall and back. Might take you longer than you think. Just heard Pete say at the telegraph office they're having a lot of trouble over there. Over the killing of some parson's wife. So much so, they call the army in. Uh, by the time I get there, things will have quieted down. You'd better see that they stay quiet here in Cimarron City, too. So long. So long, Art. Wait for me, Nancy. Howdy. Well, howdy. What can I do for you? Uh, me and my daughter just pulled into town here, looking for a job. Thought you might be able to use some help. Well, now I don't know. Most jobs around here need experience. Ever worked on a paper before? 18 years. Printer, compositor, just about anything else you can do in a newspaper. Name is Shaw. Henry Shaw. Jared Tucker's my name. Glad to know you, Mr. Tucker. Come in, come in. This is Jesse Stainback, artist and all-around handyman. How do you do, sir? Do. Well, I'm not the boss, and uh, I can't rightly say, but uh, we could use a compositor. Wish Mr. Deming were here. He owns the paper, but he's gone back to Kansas City for a spell. His folks live there. Oh, uh, Jesse, would you take this basket of rags out back, please? Yes, sir. Quite a nice little shop you got here. We like it. Eighteen years, you say, huh? Where? Oh, the uh, Arkansas Gazette, Kansas Weekly Herald, American Farmer, Cherokee Messenger, and the uh, Duncan Weekly Democrat. You name it, and I worked there. That's a lot of newspapers. A lot of years. Mm. Where was the last place you worked? Well, the uh, Duncan Weekly Democrat. How long? A couple of months, I guess. Two months, huh? That's uh, not very long. Hello. 
Would you like for me to pull your wagon underneath the trees? It'd be a lot cooler than sitting up there in the sun. What's the matter? Don't you talk to strangers? My name's Jesse. I work for Mr. Deming. He's the editor of the Sentinel. Is my pa gonna get work? Well, I reckon so. We need a compositor. Why don't I pull your wagon underneath the trees? I guess Mr. Deming won't chop my head off of this. Salary is $5 a week to start, and uh, Mr. Deming don't allow drinking on the premises. I'm not a drinking man. Oh, good. I expect you'll be needing a house to rent, Tucker, so uh, stop over at Tom Hardesty's office. I hear the Felton place is empty, and the rent should just be about right. Thank you. I'll do that. Howdy, Lane. Henry. Oh, uh, Lane. Uh, Lane Temple, Jared Tucker. Howdy. Lane here is our uh, best blacksmith, and in his spare moments, he's deputy sheriff, so uh, watch your step. Mr. Tucker here is going to settle in our town. I just hired him on the paper. Good. And uh, this here oh, is... Uh, uh, my daughter, Nancy. Oh, and mighty pretty, too. Suppose you're interested to know if we have a school here. Well, we have, young lady, and we're almighty proud of it. Nancy doesn't care much for schooling. It's free, Mr. Tucker. Thanks, folks, but... I don't hold with all this education talk. Girls' places at home. Good day, gentlemen. Yeah. Yes, make a right comfortable place for you and your daughter, Mr. Tucker. It'll do fine. Thank you, Mr. Hardesty. Now, the... Uh, the rent's due the 10th of each month, and uh, since we've made that special little deal, you'll have to be putting out for any repairs you might want to make. Yes, I know. Yes, well, I expect I'll be seeing you around, Mr. Tucker. Uh, Miss Tucker? Why can't I go to school, Pa? I keep telling you there's chores to be done. You can't be spending all your time in the schoolhouse. But I'll do the chores, Pa. I'll work real hard. I can teach you everything you need to know. You don't understand, Pa. There's other things beside the good book. I don't know nothing. I'm dumb, Pa. You're dumb because you don't listen to what I tell you. But I do. I listen to everything you tell me. Only why can't I go to school? It ain't gonna hurt nobody. And I don't like sitting around all the time. I get lonesome. So that's why you want to go to school. You don't care about learning. You just want to tramp around with boys and tend socials. I'm 17. I'm old enough to talk to boys. Are you telling me what's good for you? Hmm. Then don't go talking about things you don't understand. You never talked back to me before, Nancy. That Mrs. Greer over in Wallow put fancy ideas in your head, didn't she? Didn't she? Mrs. Greer only wanted me to sing in the church choir. That's just an excuse to lure you away, to set you against me. Mrs. Greer was good to me, Pa. She was always bringing me flowers and cookies and things. And she talked very nice to me. Tell me about things I never knew nothing about. You wouldn't even let me go to her funeral. She was an evil woman, just like your Ma. Nancy. Didn't you hear me? I said good afternoon. Please go away. Why? Can't you even talk a little while? I, I can't. I, I got to study. Well, what are you studying? The good book. <laughs> Who do you have to study that for? You gonna be a preacher or something? Is that what you're gonna be? Hmm? Of course not. Well, then why are you studying it? Well, because my pa says I can get all the learning I need from it. Did you ever go to school? No, never. My, my pa don't believe in school. Well, well, who taught you how to write and figure? Nobody. You mean you can't write? 
Well, I, I can write my name. And my ma's name, it was Anne. Well, maybe I could come around sometime. Well, I'd be glad to teach you what little I know. Thanks, but my pa wouldn't approve of that. Well, it wouldn't hurt to ask him. You want me to ask him for you? No. A and you better go now. Procedure than pictures. Hmm. Very realistic. Boy has a lot of talent. Take a look at this. This is what he did to my wife. Oh. You've got a right good looking wife, Henry. Smart, too. She has all the brains in the family. You got any children? No. That's where we took Jesse in. He's a mighty nice boy. He's too quiet sometimes, but he was an orphan all his life. He never knew his ma's pa. Maybe he's better off that way. Nancy scared of Mr. Tucker. She been talking to you? No, sir. I just passed by the house and said hello, and she ran off like she's scared of something. Nancy just isn't much for talking, boy, that's all. What'd you want to talk to her about? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to be friendly, that's all. Nancy? In a few minutes, Pa. Mm -hmm. Have you been a good girl? Yes, Pa. Anybody here? Nobody. Are you sure? Yes, it's the truth, Pa. Nobody has except that boy that works with you, and I didn't talk to him. Yes, he told me. Did your studying today, Nancy? Yes, I did, Pa. Well, let's see how well you learned your lessons. The commandment is a lamp, and the law a light, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Uh, that they may keep thee from evil and from, uh, and, and from, uh... The flattering tongue of the stranger, and don't you forget it. I don't want that boy around here. Yes, Pa, and from the flattering tongue of the stranger. Let not thy heart covet, covet... Covet what? Covet, uh, uh... You haven't studied very hard, Nancy. Yes, I have, Pa. I just can't remember all that. You know what we do when you can't remember, don't you, Nancy? Oh, howdy, Lane. I didn't know that Art was going over to Wallow. 
He could have brought us back the latest in that Kerr killing over there. Well, I can give you some of it. They had themselves a lynching party, and they found out they hung the wrong man. <laughs> the new man of yours inside? Yeah. Hi, Jess. Good afternoon, Mr. Tucker. Oh, good afternoon. I meant to ask you the other day, which way did you come into town? Old Washita Trail. Why? Oh, nothing. Just thought you might have come by way of Wallow. No. Never been there. Jesse, give me that number one plate. Yes, sir. Here, sir. Huh? Oh, just leave it there. Mr. Tucker? I've been, uh... I've been thinking, sir, that, uh... Well, we're gonna have a church social next Saturday to bring in a new clear sound bill, and, uh... Well, I thought maybe Miss Nancy... That is, with your permission, sir, maybe she could attend with me. Nancy doesn't attend socials, boy. Well, why not? Jesse, you seem like a nice boy. You have a lot of talent for drawing. Stick with that. Leave the girls alone. Well, what's wrong with taking a nice girl to a church social, Mr. Tucker? How old are you, boy? Well, 18 come August. Uh-huh. When you're as old as I am, you'll learn that a man is helpless against a woman's wiles. Oh, sure, they can look sweet and innocent. But don't you believe your eyes. It's all a lie. A snare set to destroy your soul. I'm sure Miss Nancy could never do anything like that, Mr. Tucker. That's right. She couldn't. Not if I can help it. Jesse, you must have misunderstood Mr. Tucker. No, ma'am, Miss Shaw. I'll tell you something's wrong with him. There ain't no person in his right mind could think that way. Now I know what that girl's afraid of. It's her own pa. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Monday, I'll call on the Tuckers. You think maybe you'd get Miss Nancy to go to school? Sort of seems a shame that a girl her age can't even write. Oh, that couldn't be possible. No, she told me she couldn't. Well, I'll see for myself. Now go tell Henry to wash up. Supper's ready. Yes, ma'am. I'm Mrs. Shaw. May I come in? Uh, hello. Uh, here, they're oatmeal cookies. Well, go on, take them. I thought I'd come over and have a little talk. Oh, I, uh, I wish you'd excuse me, ma'am. I'm very dirty from cleaning. I know just what you mean. What I came for, Nancy. It is Nancy, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. You've been here a week now, and I thought it was about time we became acquainted. Oh, that's very kind of you, ma'am. How old are you, Nancy? Oh, I'm 17, almost. Well, you should be going to school, child. Does your father object? Object to what? Oh, hello, Mr. Tucker. I'm Mrs. Shaw, Henry's wife. How do you do? I've just been talking to your daughter. Have you? But I really came to see you. Will you excuse us, Nancy? I'd like to talk to your father alone. Well, what's on your mind, Mrs. Shaw? Well, may I sit down, Mr. Tucker? What do you want? Why have you come here? Uh, how long has it been since Nancy lost her mother? Quite a long time. I'm glad to say she doesn't remember her. Don't you think, Mr. Tucker, that a big girl like Nancy may need the companionship of another woman, no matter how much care she gets from her father? Why don't you let her go to school or join our young people's activities at the church? Is there a law about it in Cimarron? No, of course not. I just wanted to be of help. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Shaw, but Nancy and I don't need any help. We're getting along fine. I'm sure you are. Good day, Mr. Tucker. Uh, 
Nancy, come here. How long has that woman been here? No time at all. She don't mean no harm, Pa. What did you do? What did you talk about? Nothing, Pa, honest. Keep away from her. She's no good. She's starting to bring goodies just like that Mrs. Greer. Nancy, I don't want you to accept anything from anybody, do you hear? Yes, Pa. And I don't want that woman in this house again. Yes, Pa. Nancy, come back here. Pa, I didn't mean no harm, honest, please. Don't be frightened of me, child. I'm your father, I love you. If I'm harsh with you sometimes, it's because I'm trying to be a good father to you. I don't want to punish you, I don't enjoy hurting you. I want you to know that. I want you to understand it. I'm trying, Pa. I know you are. I know, my girl. Nancy? Working hard? Gosh, Miss Nancy, how come is it every time I come and visit you, you go running off in the house? I ain't supposed to talk to you or anybody. What difference does it make if you talk to people? I don't know, but that's as Paul wants it. Well, he doesn't have to know, does he? He'll find out. He always does. Now, you just can't go on being by yourself all the time. You gotta get out and you gotta meet people and talk to people. Tell you what, tomorrow Mr. Shaw and your pa are gonna go up to Elk Creek to get the old press fix. Now maybe I can get the afternoon off and we can go someplace to do something together. We go up to my secret hiding place. Hiding place? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever goes up there. No, I wouldn't ever dare. Well, now, there ain't gonna be anybody to know about it except you and me. And I ain't gonna tell anybody. You shouldn't talk to me like this. It isn't right. Well, I wait till they're gone. Then I come and pick you up. No, you mustn't. seeds and you can plant them in your backyard. Oh, no. Pa don't hold with gardening unless it's for growing food or something useful. He says it's sinful. My! You can see for miles and miles and miles. Sometimes I just come up here and, and sit it so peaceful and far away from everything. Don't get me wrong, Miss Nancy. The shawls treat me real nice, but every once in a while I just like to be by myself. What happened to your folks, Jesse? They was killed when I was real small. They got drowned in the flood back in Ohio. The shawls took me out of the county orphanage a couple of years ago. I too? No. What happened to her? She ran away. Where? I don't know. Pa says I was too young to remember. But sometimes I think I can. Especially at night when all the lights are out. I think I can remember how she'd come and tuck me in and kiss me goodnight. And escape. 
skin felt so soft, and her hair smelled so good like it was just washed. I can't quite remember how she looked, but I know she must have been real pretty. Ain't you got some kind of picture of her? No. My pa don't need that, and if he had, he would have burned it. Pa never liked Ma. What'd he marry her for? I don't know. He says he don't want me to turn out like her. Well, that ain't right, Miss Nancy. Your pa ain't got no right talking like that. Let's don't talk about my pa anymore, Jesse. Let's go see the rock house. The family that lived here was killed by Indians. And Mrs. Rocker's pa lived here. He's the fellow that started Cimarron City. And the saying goes that this here well ain't got no bottom. But that ain't true, because all wells got to have bottom. Come on, let's eat. I'm hungry. That was good. Want an apple? No, thank you. Hey, what makes the ground so red? Oh, it's the red clay loam. There's lots of it up here. Better make sure you wipe it off your shoes, too. Because if you don't, everybody in town's going to know where you've been. Because this is the only place it is. Well, I'm not too good at it, but I'd like to learn. Someday I'd like to become an engraver. Mr. Demon says an engraver makes a lot of money. What would you do if you had a lot of money? Oh, I don't know. Take a trip around the world, I guess. Not me. If I had a lot of money, I'd just stay put right in one place. Can I take a look? You like it? Oh, you made me real pretty, Jesse. Not any prettier than you really are, Miss Nancy. You're such a nice person, Jesse. And you're nice looking, too. No, I ain't. I'm ugly. No, you're not ugly. Well, I'm not good looking. I think you are. Miss Nancy? I ain't never kissed a girl before. Oh, I never kissed a boy before, neither. Pa says it's a sin to let a boy kiss you. No, Miss Nancy, kissing ain't sinning. Why, when you kiss somebody, you... Well, you kiss them because you like them. And... Well, I like to kiss you, Miss Nancy, because I like you lots. I like you lots, too, Jesse. I'd like to be with you all the time, because you make me feel like... like I never felt before. You make me feel like I'm important, and you give me attention, and you, and you, you're kind to me. I, I, I want you to kiss me, Jesse. Can I kiss you again, Miss Nancy? Yeah, Jesse, we better be getting back. Yeah. Huh? 
Hi, Miss Shaw. Miss Tucker. Hi, Jesse. How's the old press working? Good as new. Have a good time up at Oak Creek? Oh, nothing but talk about that killing over at Wallow. Why, haven't they caught the murderer yet? No. It's funny. Men get murdered every day, and nobody thinks a thing about it. But a woman get killed, and there's no end to it. It was good to have you back. Good to be back, son. Miss Shaw sure missed you. Nancy? Sit down. Didn't you like your supper, Pa? Supper has nothing to do with what I want to talk to you about. What's the matter, Pa? I told you I didn't want you tramping around with boys. I'm not. Stand up, Nancy. Now look me in the eyes. You're lying, Nancy. No, I ain't, Pa. You've been seeing that Steinbeck boy, haven't you? You lied to me, Nancy Tucker. You lied no! to me. No! You've been lying to me all the time. Well, you're never going to lie to me again. <laughs> Steinbeck boy. You're going to learn the good book from cover to cover. You're not going to get the chance to lie anymore. Lying only leads to more evil, like your ma. She started out lying. Then she started cheating. Once she started cheating, she couldn't stop. She kept right on, Nancy, lying and cheating and deceiving. You're going to turn out just like her, unless I save you before it's too late. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Tucker. I've come to see Nancy. Come in. I... I brought a couple of my old dresses. They're old, but they haven't been worn much. I thought maybe Nancy would like to have them. May I see her? Oh, well, hello, Nancy. Are you sick? She feels better. What's the matter? <laughs> I brought over a couple of dresses, Nancy. With a little taking in at the waist, I think they'll fit you just fine. Well, what's wrong with you, child? Mr. Tucker, this child's been hurt. What happened, Nancy? How can you stand there with a good book in your hand after what you've done? You'll never raise a hand against that child again. I'm going to the sheriff's office and tell him just what you've done. Mr. Shaw. I'll mind you to keep out of business that doesn't concern you. Child beating concerns everybody, Mr. Tucker. And there are laws against such things. What gives you the right to beat that girl like that? She's my daughter, and I'll bring her up as I see fit. Just what did she do wrong to deserve that? If anybody was in the wrong, it was you. No matter what she did, she didn't deserve the beating that you gave her. Nancy never lied, not once, until she started meeting people. You can't. 
can't shut her off from the rest of the world. I won't have my daughter turning out like a ma. I'd rather see her dead. You don't know what you're saying. You're just like that Mrs. Greer. You're trying to turn her against me, leading her into evil. I won't let you. You're stark, raving mad. You ought to be put away. I know something's happened to her, Lane. What reason would Amy have to stay out all night? Yeah, and you have no ideas? No, no. I was upstairs reading. I must have dozed off. Jessie woke me this morning and told me she was gone. Mr. Temple. Mrs. Shaw visited us last night. She bought some dresses for Nancy. We paid her respect and left. What time was that? Oh, about 10 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Glad to be of help. Nowhere on this side of town, Lee. Well, she's not on the other end either. I don't know where she. There's one place we haven't looked. The old rock house. Well, what reason would she have to go up there during the night? gets red clay on their boots. I saw red clay on Jesse Stainbag's boots before you went up there. What of it? I saw it on his boots, too, but that don't say that Jesse killed Amy. He was the one that found her. Now, wait a minute. I'm sure Jesse can explain. Do your duty, Temple. I said Jesse will explain. Let him start explaining. Go ahead, Jesse. Wish. Sure, I've been up there lots of times, but... I didn't kill Mrs. Shaw. She's like my own ma to me. What were you doing up there? I can't tell you. You heard him. He can't tell us. All right. Any more talking to be done, I'll do it. Alone with Jesse. And the rest of you are going about your business. I didn't kill Elaine. You better get inside, Jesse. Jesse, don't you realize the position you're in? Yes, I realize the position, Lane, but I just can't tell you. If you don't, they're liable to hang you. Well, there'll be a trial and a jury. Then it'll be too late. Now, what were you doing up there? I can't tell you, Lane. But why? Why can't you tell? I can't. I just can't. I didn't kill him, Mr. Shaw. You gotta believe me, I loved it like my own ma. I thought you did, Jesse. But what were you doing up at the rock house? You don't have nothing to do with Mrs. Shaw. Then why can't you tell us? I just can't. Jesse, you leave me no other choice.
do you think, Lane? I believe him. What about you, Henry? I'd like to believe him. You know, Lane, I've seen a lot of boys come back from the war with distorted minds. Normal one minute, and then suddenly their mind snaps. Jesse's as normal as you or I. As he's quiet, solitary. Who knows what a boy like that thinks about? You remember that Greer murder over in Wallow? Yeah. Jesse was over there then. He was picking up some school books for his teacher. Jesse? Jesse? What? I want you to tell me what you were doing up at the Rock House. I can't. Yes, you can. And you better. I want to help you, Jess, but I can't if you hold the information back from me. We've always been friends. Tell me what you were doing up there. All right, Lean, I'll tell you. Going up there with Miss Nancy. We had to keep it a secret because of her pa. Well, I, I drew a picture and I, I, I thought I'd lost it up there, so I went back to see if I could find it. And I forgot to wipe off my boots, and that's how come the red clay was on them. That's the truth, Lane. Honest, every bit of it. Ask Miss Nancy; she'll tell you. I want to talk to Nancy. What do you want to talk to her about? Just want to ask you a few questions. I haven't told her about Mrs. Shaw yet. She liked her very much. She hasn't been feeling well lately, so I thought it best not to tell her just yet. I understand. Howdy, Nancy. How are you feeling? Oh, better, thank you. Good. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Did you ever go up to the old rock house with Jesse Stainback? No. Did he ever draw a picture of you? No. This is important, Nancy. Are you sure? Jesse's a fine boy, and he needs your help right now. Now, he claims he was up there with you, and he drew your picture. I've never known Jesse to lie. Mr. Temple, my daughter was brought up not to lie. If she says she wasn't with that boy, she wasn't. Mr. Temple? What did Jesse do? Mrs. Shaw was murdered last night, Nancy, and the blame's been put on Jesse. Now, we know he was up there, and he says he was with you. You say he wasn't. Murder's a terrible thing. Think it over. Sorry, Mr. Tucker. I had to tell her. You 
best get up, Nancy. I need your help to pack. Are we going somewhere, Pa? That's right, we are, girl. Where? I don't know yet, but we're getting out of Simmer. Then what happened to the picture you claim you drew of her? How many times do I have to tell you, Lane, I lost it? Yeah, Nancy says she never posed for any such picture. Well, someone's lying, Jesse. It's either you or that Tucker girl. What's going on here? Jesse Stainback murdered Mrs. Shaw. And if something ain't done about it fast, we'll be doing something ourselves. What's this all about, Lane? Somebody strangled Mrs. Shaw, Art. Shoved her down the well at the old rock house. The crowd's blaming Jesse. I wonder. Over in Wallow, they're still looking for the murder of Mrs. Greer. They think it was an itinerant printer who skipped town right after the killing. Been any strangers in town looking for work at the paper? Mr. Tucker. Let's have a little talk with Mr. Tucker. Get busy. Now you realize it's not so easy to deceive your pa. Pa, you knew all along. Pa, you knew I was seeing Jesse. You knew I lied to Mr. Temple. Pa, you knew I was with Jesse up at the rock house. You knew when you told Mr. Temple that I never lied. Sure I did. To save you from being talked about and shamed all over town. Now get busy and pack. Here, where do you think you're running to? To the sheriff. I've got to tell the sheriff that Jesse told the truth. Pa, they think he killed Mrs. Shaw. They may kill him for it. Pa, they'll hang him for something he never did. I've got to tell him. I... Well, you're good enough. I did my best for you, but you're just like your ma. You're full of evil and there's no salvation in you. I wanted to spare you. I didn't want to destroy you, too, but I'm going to kill you just like I did your ma. Just say you don't mean that, Pa, please. Please, my ma ran away just like you always said she did. Oh, I killed her. I had to. And that's the truth. I killed them all. Just like I'm going to kill you. No! Mama! 